Imagine this, throughout your entire life it seems you're being haunted. Disaster strikes early and often. You can't seem to trust anybody around you, and the ghost of your father follows you wherever you go. Well, for Jet Williams, this ghastly nightmare was a reality. Jet Williams is most famous, or infamous, for claiming to be the final child of the legendary Hank Williams. Rejected and spurned by the greedy family and left to fend for herself in a cold, cruel world. Before she was four years old, she had been orphaned three different times and had six name changes. But through it all, she had just one goal, make the world see that the spirit of Hank Williams was alive in her voice. But was she really cursed or simply betrayed? Did she prove her artistry in her own right, or was she just trying to mooch off a famous name? And what does her tragic story reveal about the legendary Hank Williams? Today we're going to answer these questions and more. It's a tale of tragedy, cruelty, and above all, resilience. Before we dive in, make sure to give this video a thumbs up to show support and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Are you ready? Well, let's go find out. What, what happened? happened? Cursed from birth. Hank Williams was a visionary musician, but he never claimed to be a perfect man. So it wasn't all that surprising when he stumbled into a fling with dancer Bobby Jett. Yep, while he was married. When Bobby became pregnant, it was clear that the baby would be a problem. But still, Hank planned to care for Bobby and her forthcoming child. Even after he and Bobby parted ways and he was remarried, he arranged to share custody of the child with Bobby. He wouldn't be a perfect father, but he would do his best. But the life he had planned for this child vanished on one January night in 1953 when Hank Williams died in the backseat of a Cadillac in a drug and alcohol stupor. Five days later, his final child was born. Her name was Antha Bell Jett. Hank had stipulated that in the event of his death, his mother would take custody of the child. She was happy to, and the baby was renamed Antha Catherine Yvonne Stone. But fate had other plans when she, too, passed away. The next caretaker in the line of succession was Hank's sister, but Hank's sister had a problem, too. She just did not want to take care of a baby that would make people talk. So she rejected Antha. From that day on, she was a problem to the Williams' estate. Simply a baby and already a known enemy of some very powerful people. A Mysterious Secret Although she was only a few years old, Hank's final child had already suffered immense rejection and heartbreak. And while things were about to change for the better, she would only be led further into a trap in which everybody's motives are suspect. And destiny is the only thing that seems real. Luckily, Catherine wasn't in state custody for long. She was adopted by a businessman named Wayne Dupree and his wife Louise, a wealthy couple who was able to provide for her. Unfortunately, she would enter this new family without anything from her mother, father, or biological family. She wouldn't even keep her name, which was changed once more to Kathy Louise Dupree. Kathy was able to live a pretty carefree childhood. Her adoptive parents were open with her being adopted, but they didn't tell her about who her parents were. For a while, it didn't seem to matter. She was a Dupree. That was all she'd ever known. Years went by and Kathy grew up, graduated high school, and went off to college to the University of Alabama. Roll Tide, I think I have to say that. It was a school not far from home, where things were about to change big time. Wayne and Louise were visiting Kathy at school when they happened to share some information. Kathy had recently come into about two grand from a relative of her father. And kind of for the first time, Kathy was intrigued. But Louise wouldn't tell Kathy the truth. Perhaps she could foresee what a lonely, troubled road this knowledge would send Kathy down. Or maybe she was just protecting the family they built together. She gave Kathy a very good hint, saying that her father was a famous musician from Montgomery. Of course, Kathy guessed pretty quickly, and while Louise wouldn't confirm it, the truth became clear. Kathy was really the child of Hank Williams. Kathy wasn't prepared to do anything about it. Honestly, what could she do? 
There was no proof, so Kathy settled down, married, and began to live a quiet life working in the park system. But it was here, in this peaceful, slow life, where Kathy found she couldn't shake the ghost of her father. So, she decided to go on a quest, heading to Washington to find a suitable lawyer for her task. There was just one thing stopping her, Luis. Kathy's adoptive mother was insistent. Nothing good would come of it. But regardless of her motives, Kathy was determined, and so she began down that dark path, with no idea where it would end up. A hollow victory. Once Kathy began chasing her father's ghost, things got pretty messy quickly. It turned out some people had been waiting a very long time for her to make that move, and once more, Kathy was betrayed by her own bloodline. Her search wouldn't take very long. In Washington, she met a man named F. Keith Atkinson. He helped her wrangle up a very valuable document, the very agreement signed by Hank that promised to and failed to ensure her perpetual care. The circumstances behind this discovery are murky, but once they had the document, it wasn't hard to file suit in court. She had one demand, recognition as a legitimate heir of Hank Williams. But there were some people very determined to stop this. And sadly, the most vocal opponent of Kathy's claim came from her very own half-brother, Hank Williams Jr., this Hank, along with his lawyers, had actually known about Kathy for quite some time. And once the time came, he was ready to fight, immediately denouncing her and her claim to the throne. But Kathy was ready for a fight, too. She had already decided to leave her old life behind, actually divorcing her husband, moving to Washington, and marrying her lawyer in 1986. And in 1987, Kathy won a large victory. It was officially established in court that she was the biological daughter of Hank Williams. Hank Jr. tried to appeal the case, but the appeal was denied, and Hank was furious. He began making very harsh comments about Kathy in the press. And he isn't the only one angry about the situation. Hank Williams III has spoken up even more vocally, saying, quote, She's not even a real musician. Channeling Hank Williams. Through years of struggle, Jet finally had what she had been dreaming of ever since that fateful day in her dorm room. The state, if not her family, had recognized her as the heir to a very famous man. But Jet found that even after her victory, she didn't feel complete. She wanted more. You see, ever since she learned the truth about her father, Jet had nursed an idea. What if musical genius was in her blood too? After all, Hank Jr. had built a long and prosperous career off that very idea. So she began playing music, attempting to connect with Hank's legacy. She began playing shows, then touring, playing her father's songs, I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry. Alone and forsaken, these old standards took on new life when she sang them. In two different ways, then, did Jet claw her way towards her father, screaming to the world that her life, her blood, had meaning. So, did the country recognize her talents? Was the spirit of Hank really alive in the form of this forgotten child? The answer, I think, is complicated. In some ways, she has succeeded at her goal. She's made a career out of her act, toured the world, and played the Grand Ole Opry. Let's face it, that's more than most of us can say. But, on the other hand, it seems clear that Jet never really got exactly what she was looking for. Although she has patched things up with Hank Jr., and the pair have collaborated on several projects dedicated to preserving their father's legacy. But she's never truly been accepted by him or his family, who deride her as a coattail riding interlooper, put bluntly a gimmicky hack. And while most would agree that's a cruel and unfair thing to say, it is also true that Jet has thrown herself after the ghost of her father at every turn playing his songs, preserving his archives, and keeping his name alive. I think there's an important lesson here. While she attempted to get closer to her father's ghost, Jet was forced to make her own way in life, while Hank Jr. easily leveraged his family connection into a career. Jet Williams had to fight for it. While much of her family never really left Alabama, Jet moved to Washington, mingled and married lawyers, and even lived on a houseboat for a bit. While along the way, she developed her own personality, her own outlook on life, and her own story. The biggest factor in her success ended up not being her father, but her own resilience. 
And that's something to be proud of. So what do you think? Does Jet Williams have a legitimate claim to her father's empire or not? Do you think her music measures up to her dad's? Could it have if she started at a younger age? Get in the comments and tell us all things Jet and Hank Williams. Before you go, hit the thumbs up icon to show support. And tell us who we should cover next. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you... What, what happened? happened?